My name is NJ Hawkeby. I run a small politically focused blog called Dear Mr. President. I'm a smoker and I've had enough. But I am one man and I need your help. For 90 days, our government has chosen to disregard the plight of a large portion of the population at every turn, under the guise of protecting our fragile health system. But let's be quite honest here. This has nothing to do with protecting the masses and everything to do with a power trip. If the government really cared, they would listen to the experts who have come out in opposition of the tobacco ban, mental health professionals, social workers, a bloody cardiologist for crying out loud. All of these people have spoken up and yet the NCCC has chosen to base its decisions on flawed science. They don't care about us. All they care about is keeping citizens of this great country under thumb. Every day, there, is a new po there are new posts on social media telling pe of people who have taken their lives due to the stress and trauma of withdrawal. Every day, there are stories of people selling their stuff, stuff to be able to afford to pay the exorbitant prices of tobacco on the black market. These are people who are having to choose between food and cigarettes. These are people like me. These are people like you. Enough is enough. The science doesn't support their claims. Don't get me wrong. So smoking is a filthy habit. It's bad for our health and people should be encouraged to quit. As a smoker, I would be the first one to admit this. But I'm not the first one to admit this. Millions, if not billions of smokers before me have tried to quit, in varying degrees of success. It is what the multi-billion dollar anti-smoking industry is based on. Champix, Zyban, tobacco patches, nicotine inhalers, uh, nasal sprays, lozenges, gums, microtabs, e-cigarettes, vapes. All, uh, as long as there are smokers, there are going to be smokers who want to quit. Nicotine replacement therapy programs and medications are counting on it forcing a country to quit by depriving them of the substance, substance that they are addicted to is not the way to go about it. I started, dear Mr. President, to provide a voice to the voiceless. Far too often, those of us who, are, who want to have our say are shouted down by opposing views, and even the government itself. I wanted to provide a platform where people could have their say regardless of the issue they wanted to discuss. I had hoped that South Africans would use my platform to get their point out there and that government, and specifically our president, would take notice. It has become blatantly clear that we are being ignored. We, the citizen, citizenry of this great country, are only good for votes when it comes to actually taking our opinions into consideration. That is too much to ask. So. The time has come to take matters into our own hands. If the government thinks it can ignore us, we will make ourselves unignorable. The time has come to put our collective foot down and say no more. Even if you're a non-smoker and abhor smoking, you need to come out and stand with us. This issue is so much bigger than smoking. This is an infringement on our choices. And how long ago and how long after they get away with removing the freedom of choice of smokers will they start to come after your choices as well. Your right to choose where to stay, who to associate with, who to vote for. This is the proverbial slippery slope. It's not a race thing. It's not a gender thing. It's not a class thing. This is a South African thing. The only way to prevent further overreach is to nip it in the bud here and now. Now, this is where I ask you to do something most South Africans are loath to do. Most of us think taking action has no effect, and ordinarily, you will be right. But I want, to take, want us to take a different approach. I need you to join me. I need ordinary South Africans in every city, in every town, in every dorpi, to come out and make their presence known. On Saturday, the 4th of July, at midday, I'm asking asking that you assemble in front of major government buildings, the Union Buildings in Pretoria, the Constitutional Court in Johannesburg, the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein, um, 
Parliament in Cape Town, the provincial legislatures in the nine provinces, city and town halls, and municipal offices. It doesn't matter where you are. You just need to get to these government buildings and assemble. But I want to make a few unusual requests. One, we're in the midst of a pandemic, so be responsible. Wear your face masks, make use of hand sanitizer, and maintain social distance, distancing of at least one and a half meter radius around you. Not only will this reduce your exposure to any possible infection, but it will also spread us out and make for a more formidable, formidable looking crowd. Two, wear a black armband in memory of the people who have lost their lives during the lockdown. To be honest, it doesn't really matter who you choose to wear the armband uh, in memory of, whether it's for someone who died at the hands of the police or military, or someone who succumbed to COVID-19, or if the person you're remembering took their own life, or had their body give out because they were denied access to tobacco and or alcohol. Just wear the armband. And three, be calm, be quiet. Keep your, bring your placards and have your say that way. But South Africa has become desensitized to noisy protests. Having millions of, of people around the country assemble in, in, in near silence at the same time on the same day and just glare at government buildings will speak volumes. This will send out a very clear, very powerful message to the country and the world. And if you can't make it to a public protest or you're worried about comorbidities and taking part in a public gathering during a pandemic, go out into your street in front of your house, wearing your mask and your armband and take a selfie or get someone to take a picture of you with your placard and then join the Smokers Protest group on Facebook and upload your photos there. Also on the day, check into the Facebook event in your area and be counted as a fed up South African. The time has come to take back the power. Waiting until the next election to have your say is too long. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have our say then too, but if we wait until uh, we can get our voice, uh, can voice our discontent at the polls, we may not have many rights and freedoms left. Join me on the 4th of July at midday. I need you. We need each other. Let's show our dividing government what a united country we can be. If you want to lend a hand in getting a protest going in your area, join the Smokers Protest Facebook group and get in touch. We welcome all the help we can get. Thank you. Nkosi Sikalali, Africa.